How about that cigar? How about that cigar? Well, ladies and gentlemen, it is Tuesday night, mm, and mm, welcome mm. to episode number... 38. 38 of How About That Cigar. We are here live at Sodi Cigar Shop in Oak Park Heights, Minnesota. Thanks for joining us. Thanks for watching. Thanks for listening. If you are watching live on Facebook, please take a minute to share us out live to your favorite Facebook cigar groups. And if you are listening on your favorite audio podcast platform, thanks for listening while you work out or drive down the road or whatever it is you do. While you mm -hmm. listen to podcasts, take a moment and subscribe and rate the podcast a big old fat five stars. Five of them. Thank you. So, uh, Garrett, we have a little bit of a snafu programming change this evening yeah yeah snafu it's all good yeah so we um this evening <clears throat> uh for episode 38 we were going to uh talk to terrence riley from agonor Salif. unfortunately mm -hmm. we had some technical problems it happens yep we live in an imperfect world and it's all good uh but we roll with the punches and the show must go on it must so we are going to uh, uh mix things up a little bit so we uh uh, Garrett had a good idea for uh, something to do. We we did this a few months ago, yeah, and we're going to do it again. We went into the humidor and blindly, well, I chose the cigar, took off the band, gave it to Garrett. And he did the same for me, mm -hmm. and we are going to light these up right now. Um, so as always, uh, we come to you from the Drew Estate Cigar Studios, and this time, of course, the Drew Estate Cigar Studios have traveled all the way to Sodi's Cigar Shop. That's and crazy. We would like to uh, thank Drew Estate for always being a part of HBTC Live yes. and tell you about the Pappy Van Winkle Family Reserve Barrel Fermented. It is a long filler premium cigar long. rolled in that limited qualities that quantities that land LeGrand. You see, you're messing me up. LeGrand Fabric <laughs> of Drew Estate in Esteli, Nicaragua. Deep barrel fermentation Deep. is the key that is the key process that makes this expression vastly different from anything on the market. Hand selected leaves from Kentucky are packed into small torquettes, packed. which are then loaded strategically into oak bourbon barrels. Water is then added while immense pressure is applied to the torquettes pressure. via railroad jacks. The tobacco is removed two to three times per year, shaken out, and then repacked. This total Repack process it. of per fermentation takes 12 to 18 months, leaving a truly unique flavor profile and aroma. The Pappy Van Winkle mm. Family Reserve Barrel Fermented is now available at Brick and Mortar Drew Diplomat Retailers. Boom. So for episode number 38, uh, mm. we're going to start out just by talking about some of the nonsense we normally do. So both of our favorite NFL teams, mm -hmm. the Packers and the Vikings, are both utterly <clears throat> me mediocre. <laughs> yes, they are. I, you know, <clears throat> I just don't even know what to say. Um, you know, even analysts are all over the place on both of our teams. Yeah. Uh, both of our teams say that um, we are not as good as our record indicates. And then they say things like Cowboys are better than their record. And <laughs> well, that's just crazy talk. I'm sorry. It, it really is. Cow so Cowboys are not better than their record. They really aren't, uh, though. They are leading the division. At well, uh, six and seven, are they? Yeah, yeah. So, so good on them. Yeah. Uh, Tim Suitcamp, brother, I would say welcome, <laughs> but no, it's kidding. Always good to have you, brother. Tim, Tim knows that we've had decent microphones and internet for a long <clears throat> time now. Yeah. Um, we just moved and drywall and drywall. Mm -hmm. Drywall is good. Um, and then, uh, so the the bowl bid for the Golden Gophers came in for the Minnesota yep. Golden Gophers. We are going to play on New Year's Day yep. in the Outback Bowl. Yep. And for the first time ever, we're going to face Auburn. Can you believe this? We've never played ever. Oh, really? That's according to every every source I found. We've never played them ever. I don't know. Sounds weird to me, but that's what I read. Huh. Um, and uh, so I put a note on here to talk really quickly about the Minnesota Wild that there was a slight improvement. We actually moved up a spot in the standards or in the standings, but they're losing two to nothing right now. Last I checked. I have not checked. So it's the wild and it's, and it's, it's, uh, uh, it's the ducks. It's Anaheim. I, I'm sorry. I can't stand Anaheim. And if, if you're an Anaheim fan, God bless you. But yeah, I just don't like your team. Uh, I agree. Joseph Guzman is the starting water boy for 
um, who is he the starting water boy for? For the uh, the Pensatucky uh, douche canoes. Douche. Can <laughs> yes, that's that's totally it. Starting water boy for the Pensatucky douche canoes. <clears throat> it's my favorite team. <laughs> it is a great team. Um. So uh, yeah, we uh, you know, like we said, a little bit of a programming change tonight, but you know, things happen, and we're gonna go go right through it. This cigar, by the way, we just lit up our blind cigars this one's very tasty right off the bat the it was funny the you get this sometimes i clipped it and i lit it and i started to draw on it and it was the draw was very tight but then literally halfway through that first draw it just because i that love heat, when that happens that heat started going through it and it just yeah it's good though it's starting out good yeah or like a perfecto or a salamone yeah. when you know you light it and you're like oh my gosh do i have to you know and then all of a sudden it's just like whoo, it's awesome it's like that star wars noise you just made it is i dig it <clears throat> uh so let's get into our opening segment brought to you by corona cigar company and coronacigar.com it is the internet's largest and easiest to use virtual cigar store corona cigar company offers you the finest handmade cigars humidors and cigar accessories at the absolute lowest possible price at corona cigar company they take pride in being cigar fanatics just like you and me that is why you will find the best selection and the rarest, finest premium cigars available anywhere in the world. Choose from famous brands like Padron, Davidoff, Fuente, and hundreds more. And you will also find the unique and very limited cigars containing Florida sun-grown tobacco. As a proud American president and founder of Corona Cigar Company, Mr. Jeff Borshowitz believed it was possible to bring cigar tobacco farming back to Florida. As a cigar retailer, Jeff believed consumers would be willing to pay a little more for cigars that contain genuine Florida-grown cigar tobacco. As long as the tobacco was unique, distinctive, flavorful, and of the highest quality. At Corona Cigar Company and coronacigar.com, you'll find the best selection anywhere in the world of cigars containing this special Florida sun-grown tobacco. If you live in Florida or are just visiting, be sure to visit any of the great Corona Cigar locations in downtown Orlando, Sand Lake, Lake Mary, and also the Davidoff of Geneva Lounge in Tampa. For more info on all of that, please visit coronacigar.com and floridasungrown.com. Yeah, we still got to get a different copy. I can't. I can't mess with that. Well, that's why I like it. I, you can't I, sure. you can't screw me up on that one. <clears throat> uh, so I want to thank everybody for joining. For those of you who are just uh, coming on, I want to let you know that we're switching gears a little bit. Um, our guests, and we had some technical difficulties. So um, what we're doing is I got Matt a cigar, debanded it, gave it to him, and he did the same for me. And... Uh, Mine is tasty. We're gonna, yeah, we're gonna smoke these and see what we think of them. See if we can uh, name any characteristics about the cigar. Uh, we're gonna talk about, you know, we got a, you know, a lot of really cool ideas coming up. But if you have any ideas, any questions, any things that you want to talk about, please leave it in the comments. Yeah, absolutely. Um, that is a statement for everyone except. Tim Sue Kim. Tim can ask questions too. We might not a ask him on the air, but he can. He can. Okay. He can ask. I'm gonna take a little sip of this whiskey, Andrew. Thank you for the whiskey. Cheers. Shout out to Andrew. Um, I want to give a shout out also to uh, Daniel Big Bear. Big Bear is he uh, watching? Well, I saw him today, and okay. he actually was uh, just listening to our podcast from last week. And uh, inspired him to get the Colision. Oh, nice! Loved it. Yeah, I've seen some. I've all, now. I've only still smoked the one that you brought. Oh, I've had, and I haven't. I, I haven't had more than that one. And and I'll be honest. I've heard mixed reviews, but it's hard to say early on because you know they 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 shipped from a long way away. They just arrived in stores, so you know, obviously, to to actually review it, want to buy some, have them at home, leave them sit in the humidor for a month or so, and and you know, acclimate. And plus, winter in Minnesota, I mean, it's it's super like dry. six below or five below right oh, yeah, now. It's five below. So it's it kind of sucks out there. So reviewing cigars is, uh, you know, it's not easy, but it's doable. Do you have uh, What the Forecast? Uh, I don't anymore. I did. <laughs> it's one of my favorite apps. You guys should go check out What the Forecast. Yeah. And, uh, and check, <laughs> especially if you're in Minnesota. 
it's uh it's it's comedy this cigar that garrett got me is very nice it's uh maduro it's uh yeah it's got nice sweetness to it a little bit of pepper i dig it um yeah january 7th let's look ahead into the yeah, future yeah. let's get in the let's get in the time machine and go, go into the future yeah so um next week we're going to talk to justin andrews from diesel cigars mm -hmm. and then we're gonna the rest of the year is for family and holidays stuff like that so mm -hmm. no more shows after next tuesday when we talk to justin so definitely tune in watch us talk to justin because he's a great dude uh, and has really done like a phenomenal job uh turning diesel into a oh man a killer brand absolutely and and then uh we'll take the rest of december off so january 7th we are going to have our first ever top cigars of the year list mm. and we don't even know yet what it's going to look like we we still have to develop our methodology for you know yeah for figuring that out but it's it's basically it may be a top 10 it may be a top 12 it may be a top eight we just don't know yet because yep. You know, being uh, some of the some of the newer cigar media, we don't necessarily have a ton of reviews, you know, to choose from. But yep. we're going to rank them, all of them from the year, and decide whether or not that should be turned into a top ten or a top twelve or what it should be. And we're going to get together on the seventh, and we're going to talk through that list and and uh, you know, uh, congratulate some some companies for uh, for making our list and talk about the the cigars that we smoked and loved so much during the year yeah maybe give out like a stuffed platypus or something we'll give out yeah maybe a stuffed platypus uh we might give out that or we might give out uh uh free passes to uh pacific playland oh yeah because yeah, everybody loves pacific playland absolutely and um and then uh maybe a box of twinkies mm. mm -hmm. um mm -hmm. so garrett tell everybody about um, you had a great idea for a new segment that we're going to start introducing, uh, and we're, we'll go ahead and introduce it tonight, but tell everybody about the new segment that we're going to start putting into every single show. We are going to be doing, uh, so my idea was a uh, cigar vocabulary and I was racking my brain, you know, what could we call this? And then, you know, I shot Matt a text and say, Hey, you know, uh, let's do a cigar word of the day, you know, vocabulary. And, um, you know, it, it, I think we could do a lot of stuff with it and went some ideas back and forth. And finally, Matt came up with the name, um, which is smokabulary. Smokabulary. It just works. It, it just does. Works. And yeah. I was a little pissed off because I had already been thinking about this for a while <laughs> and I was I trying see. to make cigar vocabulary work and it obviously doesn't work. It, it sort of works. It almost works, but it, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> so when, uh, when he said smoke vocabulary, I, I mean, I was amazed. It's like, yep, that's what it is. And you're a dick. Yeah, I am a dick. Yeah. But, but no, it was perfect. So it's, um, it's one of those things that, you know, people who, especially, you know, for, for you guys that listen to us and watch you, you may not, you know, be, uh, you know, have a lot of experience in cigars and that's fine. There's so many different little like secret words that the cigar community has. And, you know, we don't want those to necessarily be, you know, super secret, uh, fluffer, fluffer, fluffer. Yeah. Is, is okay. So, so if somebody can come up with, uh, what they would imagine, the word fluffer to mean in the world of cigars i would love to hear that i would too because <laughs> I'm, I'm not gonna be i'm not gonna lie i'm a little scared i would yeah but uh you know that'll maybe be in the after hours yep portion yep. of the show that, um, yeah that's after the kids go to bed <laughs> there's so many like super secret words in cigars that uh yeah. we don't want people listening to go i have no idea what that words mean word means and yeah i mean there's google and right. go google's okay I mean, but it, it doesn't you, have every cultural Google. You know, Google doesn't know everything, mm -mm. even though they do. I mean, Google's OK, I guess, if you if you like that kind of thing where you can go to this, you know, place that'll literally give you the answer to any question you've ever, ever. had in life. Mm -hmm. But uh, I mean, wouldn't you rather hear it from us? Right. I, I, I think you should rather hear. And it from us. we'll give you insights <laughs> that are, you know, I think better than Google. I know because Google's just. 
Google's just now. I feel like um, that was a John Lennon statement talking. Was about, that a John Lennon statement? Well, talking about how we're better than Google and John Lennon. Oh yeah, better, we're bigger than bigger the, than the Jesus. Oh yeah, yeah. Imagine there's no Google. <laughs> it's easy if you try. Uh, uh, so, did you want to share uh, the word of the day, or is that later? What What are your? Well, we so we not knowing. Uh, before we got together that we each picked a word of the day let's mm -hmm. do them this week let's do them both cool because we've got space to fill so we let's do. do them both all right what's yours mine is vitola oh, okay that was mine too so. okay well <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah vitola there we go so y you have uh you have the things written down so um, i did a little digging on this thing called called google which you know if you've never just, heard of it if you've never heard of google look it up it's pretty cool google it um yeah if you haven't heard of google google it because it's pretty cool um so vitola translates to cigar band or uh it means it could also mean appearance or looks so it's oh, really the way, and which makes sense because it's the way a cigar mm. looks yeah you know this looks like a rebuso the one you're smoking looks like a, yeah. a corona, uh, corona gorda, gorda. Yeah. yeah so and and really Vitola just means the the size, the format of a cigar you're smoking. Size and shape. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, Robusto, Toro, Churchill, Torpedo. Um, Salomon. Salomon. Perfecto. Yeah. So and, uh, that's and really some what it companies, to. And some companies just make up their own. Some companies make up some, there's some weird words there out there. There are some very weird and, Vitolas. And I dig creativity. Don't get me wrong. <laughs> I really do. And I want people to have that freedom to be creative with the, you know, the words they use. But sometimes it's nice to just know, uh, okay, uh, so so this is the... Um, yeah, but if you add that in the rhino, the, in yeah, the rhino size? The, the rhino size is the best. What about the Fraggle Rock? The Fraggle Rock is my <laughs> absolute favorite. I love the Fraggle the, Rock the, size. So if you, and, and sometimes it's nice to know, wait, is the Fraggle Rock the Robusto or the Toro? Yeah. So... Um, yeah, I, I dig creativity, but maybe sometimes keep it simple. Yeah. You know, and, and there's something to be said for, uh, standardization, mm -hmm. you know? Um, and I get, you know, again, with the creativity thing, if, you know, you're blending a cigar and maybe that cigar doesn't fit within either a, um, Robusto or Corona and you have to make this, you know, the certain shape, like I get that, you know, and I'm not, we are not dissing on that at all. Yeah. But if you make a Robusto and you call it the princess cut, um, I'm going to, I'm going to shake my head a little. I'm going to shake my head more than a little if you call it the princess cut. Yeah. But that's just me because I'm a bad person. But if you make a conforming size and you call it something else, yeah. like why? Yeah. No, that's true. Um, and the, so the, you know, the Vitola, that's, you know, it's just it's just a way to know which size cigar is which you know you the standards you can you can look up on again this thing called google if you if you've ever heard of it you can go look up a a chart for cigar vitola size and there's got to be a, a hundred different places out there that have pictures and it'll it'll actually give you a, a you know a visual representation of each size you know from churchill and there's Brands like Asylum that have the eight by eighties, which right. I, I mean, I don't even think they have a name for those Vitolas because most of the mm -hmm. Vitola names are, you know, traditional, you know, have been around for generations. And then you bring in something like an eight by 80 and you, all you can call it is the Fister. You the know? Fister. That's great. The Fister, the eight by 80. I love it. That's, that's, or the, yeah, never mind. I, I had some. <laughs> That's something else I was going to go with. I'm going to keep that one to myself. We're going downhill. <laughs> um, and then, uh, so, I mean, we can sort of tease a little bit of a, you know, another uh, smokabulary word. And that is, um, you know, when, when talking about Vitola, you also sort of have to talk a little bit about um, shape. And they're essentially, um, you know, if it's just a straight-sided cigar, you know, that's, that just looks like sort of a cylinder where you, you call that a Parejo and then anything and Garrett just totally dropped a cigar. And if you, if you've got a cigar that has some sort of, uh, unconventional shape to it, 
you would call that a figurado. So that, and that could be honestly a, you, you could, we're good. <laughs> that could be anything from a uh, torpedo to a bellicoso to mm -hmm. a diadema <clears throat> to, you know, Salomon. Uh, so there's Parejos and Figurados. Parejos <clears throat> are just your basic straight sided cigar, and Figurados are unusual shapes. Yep. Uh, does that include box press? Uh, no, box press is just a, a category of its own. Yeah. Because you can have a box press Pareto, Pareto. and yeah. a box press. Yeah, Pareto. you're right. Yep. Yep. Um, and, you know, uh, Vitola, while it's a, uh, it, it's a cool word to know and, you know, good word to know, I, I don't see it used a lot in normal conversation. Um, if, let's say, I'm a new guy and I walk into a humidor, I'm the tobacconist isn't you know, typically ever going to say, what Vitola do you prefer? Or I'm not going to say, you know, the Vitola that I really prefer is, yeah. um, so it's not, it's not a, a word commonly used, but you'll see it in print a lot. Yeah. And it's just sort of a, a, a way to, you know, you want to try to differentiate the cigar industry from the rest of the world. So, um, it's one of those cigar words. Um, Let's talk a little bit about these uh, cigars we're smoking. You haven't really given us any commentary on yours, except the fact that you just dropped it. And I did, and I split it. Split it. That's all right. It'll be fine. It will be fine. Um, well, it's a razor sharp burn, and the draw is perfect for me. It has just a little bit of resistance, and um, it's sweet. The wrapper is obviously a very thin uh, wrapper, and I'm sure it would have been awesome and perfect had I not um, gotten a little giddy over here. Um, Flavor-wise, it's it's smooth, so it's a light to medium, I'm guessing, because I am getting a little bit of a ramp from it. Um, I can't put my finger on what it is yet. I'm not sure that I will. But, that's okay. Yeah. You don't have to okay. guess it exactly. Yeah. Um, this one is, is yeah, that it's got Maduro sweetness. And it's interesting because I am getting this sort of campfire sort of thing. Not like, not like uh, Kentucky fire cured, you know, not, not nearly that pronounced because, you know, Kentucky fire cured is like, you know, like it just walked into a, um, a smokehouse. But, you know, this just has some of those, sort of you know characteristics that you get yeah. standing next to a campfire yeah uh, but it's it's burning well it's not perfect but it's burning nicely uh crap loads of smoke output on this one though yes uh, it's a very oily cigar. And the wrapper looks really nice i almost want to say it's broadleaf but i can't quite tell for sure i'm getting some broadleaf though maybe mm -hmm. but i like it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, we are, again, we're grateful for Sodi's Cigar Bar Absolutely. and uh, to be able to come here on the fly and, um, you know, just hang out. It's, uh, it's, it's a treat to be able to be, you know, to have the relationship with uh, local shops that we get yeah. a chance to do that. So, yeah, definitely. And it helps. We were grateful because, um, you know, this, the studio where we, um, where we do the show is my garage and it's, it's a nice garage. It's tons of space. And we worked over the weekend to get a furnace installed in there, but there's still a lot more to be done to get that up and running mm -hmm. properly. So the space is, is consistently heated. So, uh, knowing that it was going to be, uh, five below tonight, Garrett was nice enough to reach out to Sodi's and they were, um, very generous to let us use the space to, uh, to do the show. Yeah. So thanks, Luke. Appreciate it. Um, so let, it, kind of that brings up a, a point talking about, um, you know, because we're part of MHC, mm -hmm. you know, Minnesota Herf Connection. And um, for, for those of you out there anywhere in the country, really anywhere in the world, um, we want you guys to leave comments. We want you to send us comments on the website and give us an idea of of how you use social media to build your cigar community to so that because cigar 
or social media, whether it's cigars or whatever it is, it should it shouldn't be the end all. You know, it shouldn't be the the platform where you spend all your time in your community. It should be it should just be used as a as a sort of a a springboard to get people connected mm -hmm. so that then you can spend your spend some time uh, conversing a little bit and say, hey, let's go to this place and get together and hang out and meet each other. Let's go to that place, get together and hang out and meet each other. And, and, um, you know, one of the things we do is the Friday hearth every Friday, we, we go, we try to go to some, you know, mix it up and go to some different shops around the twin cities area to support the local shops, but also, so maybe somebody who lives on the West side can have a chance to go out to an East side shop, yep. or North side, South side, that kind of thing. And everybody will maybe get a chance to, uh, you know, leave work a little bit early on a Friday afternoon go to a shop, sit down and, and, and smoke with some good people, get to know people they never knew before. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, that's a fantastic, uh, segue to something that I wanted to bring up anyway is, um, you know, I fielded some, you know, people that reach out to us on Facebook messenger and, uh, there was, uh, you know, a guy who said, Hey, just want to let you guys know that, you know, I dig your show, blah, blah, blah. And, um, let them know how grateful it, I was to, you know, hear comments like that. Yeah. And then he let me know that, you know, he actually met up with somebody who he met watching our show. Oh, no way. Yeah. That's great. I you love know? it. So, uh, you know, that's just a, you know, a awesome, you know, and that's what, you know, this is about community and this is about people and yeah. we want to tell stories about, you know, the people. Um, it's cool to talk about cigars and, um, and we do plenty of that. But the thing that really inspired me to, you know, for Matt and I was there are tons of stories of, you know, the people behind the scenes, all the people that touch this cigar before it gets to my hands. Um, you know, there's families, there's, you know, just tons of stuff and tons of stories to tell. Yeah. And so um, and then and then the community, you know, the consumers. Yeah. Um so excited to get those messages, you know, uh, please uh, keep them coming. Yeah. We love to hear, hear those stories. Yeah. And we really, honestly, any, anytime you guys reach out to us, whether it's on the website or whether it's leaving Facebook messages or comments on these videos, um, whether it's here or on YouTube, um, we, we appreciate it beyond what you can know. We really do appreciate it. And, and we want to hear from you. If you have show ideas, if you have, mm -hmm. If you have comments, if you have suggestions, anything like that, we want to hear it. You yeah. know, even if it's even if it's criticism, you know, we'll take it. Absolutely, you know, we can take it. It's it's all good. We want to, you know, if it helps make us better, you know, bring, yeah, bring it on. Yeah, and uh, you know, and I don't think any, um, I don't want to say we're a business, but I think any business that doesn't take criticism isn't willing to grow and isn't listening to their consumer base. Yeah. And, you know, Matt and I, while this is a labor of love for us, we love cigars. We love the, the cigar culture. Um, we love doing the media. Um, ultimately, if it's not serving a purpose to that culture, yeah, you know, why are we doing it? So we want to hear those, uh, those pieces of input. That's important. Yeah. And, um, if, uh, if we, just quickly going back to the 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 community groups you know if you've got mm -hmm. if, if you let's let's just choose a city at random if you're in the phoenix area you know and you have a you know there's probably hopefully there's some good cigar groups on facebook for people in the phoenix area you know um and whatever city you're in we want you guys to be active in those groups and we want you to get out there to your local shops support the shop owners and get to know the people who are around you in the cigar community because you're going to meet every type of person you can imagine. You're going to meet meet people that um, you know you're that um, you never would have had a chance to meet before. Mm -hmm. That's one of the greatest things about the cigar community. Whether it's whether Facebook is involved or not, you go into a cigar shop, you go into the humidor, pick out a couple cigars, sit down in a chair, light up, and the next thing you know, you're talking to people you never otherwise would have had a chance to talk to. Because yep. it takes you out of your daily grind. It takes you out of your routine, you know, because, you know, we've all got jobs that we want to do well at. We've all got families that we want to take care of and support and, um, you know, be there for.
but there are those times that you just need to disconnect and just, you know, spend some time. And there, there'll be times that's the, one of the cool things about cigars is you can be at home by yourself, light up a cigar and read a book and just kind of chill. You can light up a cigar and turn on a movie or a game and just chill zone out or you can you know sit down with people and talk about life you can talk about the the tough things going on in your life you can talk about the great things going on in your life you can joke with each other and and uh it 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 sort of facilitates conversation it yep. facilitates sort of an openness yeah and it really does you gotta you gotta spend that time uh and and one of the best ways to do that even if even if you're not a huge fan of being being out there and you know meeting new people it it uh it'll bring you to a place where where maybe you never thought you'd be able to get before totally agree so yep and like we always say cigar people are the best people yeah uh they really are and they've you know proven that over and over and over again to uh you know somebody is sick yep um you know and they'll rally up and you know, auction off a bunch of cigars to help pay for medical bills. Like yeah. it's just a an amazing community. Yeah, and we've seen that so many times. Yeah, whether it was on MHC or through other groups, somebody yep. says, "Oh, I lost my job." I mean, it, it happened for me. <coughs> yeah, um, years ago. Um, it's, this was many years ago that uh, um, I lost my job, and a bunch of people in in uh, it was actually on Cigar Dojo. You know, oh, that's I right. just I just put out a message just saying, hey, guys, just want to let you know I lost my job. So I'd appreciate some some, uh, you know, some prayers and some, uh, you know, some some happy thoughts uh, as I uh, go out there and start digging in, trying to find a new job. And um, people just like surrounded me with with uh, with love, really. Mm -hmm. And I I this big box showed up at my house. Uh, a month later or so filled with a brand new humidor and a crap load of cigars. And it was just, it was awesome. Just from people, people who not a single one of these people had I ever met in person ever. And um, I've seen that happen. And I've, I've since that's happened to me, I've tried to pay it forward continually. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things it does is because when, when an act of generosity comes your way, you can't help, but, but, uh, um, feel inspired, feel inspired to, to give that back yeah. to, to the next person. You know, it's just like being in line at the drive through and, mm -hmm. uh, paying for the car I behind you. Yeah. Uh, and, 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 uh, it's happened to me where I'm in the, in line at the drive through and I go up there to pay and they say, Oh no, the person in front of you already paid, you know, it feels good. And when it happens to you, you, you just feel compelled to want to do it for the next person. Absolutely. So, and do that with cigars, you know, if you're, if you're with friends or, or even, people that you know you barely even know um you know uh, don't don't be afraid to uh you know share a cigar that you love that maybe they haven't heard of before yeah you know share yeah. it with them maybe they turn out to love it and you never know maybe uh even that mooch you know there's uh there's a you know a guy or two or a gal or two in every group that has a mooch you know yeah there's uh, you're always gonna have that love them you know, and love them through cigars. And uh, maybe someday all the seeds that you've planted will uh, will grow. And if they don't, then, you know. Duct tape. Duct tape. Chains. Trunk of a car. Honey and fire ants. Whoa. Dark. Got dark. Whoa. Um, yep. Let's... Uh, uh, since we normally have a useless fact of the week, mm. I want to talk about a useless fact of the week. Yeah. Um, so it turns out in 1969, there was a musician by the name of Jim Sullivan and he recorded and he was, he was obscure. He wasn't, you know, had no notoriety or fame of any kind. Okay. Um, he recorded an album that was called UFO. And this album featured strange lyrics about leaving his family and being abducted by aliens. Well, 
Sullivan disappeared six years later without a trace. The only piece of evidence being his abandoned car found on a desert road. Sullivan left Los Angeles on March 4th, 1975 to drive to Nashville alone in his Volkswagen Beetle. The next day after being cautioned by a highway patrol officer regarding his driving, he checked into the La Mesa Hotel in Santa Rosa, New Mexico. Later reports suggest he did not sleep there and left his keys inside the room. He bought vodka at the town store. He was seen following. Uh, he was seen the following day, about 26 miles away, at a remote ranch owned by the Genetti family. His car was later found abandoned at the ranch, and he was reportedly last seen walking away from it. The car contained Sullivan's money, papers, guitar, clothes, and a box of his unsold records. He was never seen again. So, uh, yeah. So that happened. <laughs> you have no response to that? Coyotes. <laughs> That's what the realist in me. Coyotes. Yeah. Like with the, the coyotes got them. Like with the Acme Rockets and. Yep. And the giant the, anvils. The TNT actually yeah. specifically. The, <laughs> that always worked well for Wiley. Wait. No. No, it didn't. No, it didn't. It never no. tended to work out well for him. No. And although, you know, uh, how good he was painting a road on the side of a <laughs> mountain. Like that is good artwork I and saw, quick. I saw something that reminds me. I saw something on Facebook within the last couple of weeks. Somebody posted some story. It was somewhere in Europe. I don't remember where, but there was some place where in some little town, somebody painted what looked like the entrance to a tunnel on the side of a wall. And the city ended up having to paint over it because there were like four cars in three weeks that drove right into the wall thinking it was a because the painting was really good it looked very realistic and there were like four cars in the first two weeks drove right into the wall so the city ended up having to to hire a contractor to paint over it that's sad and funny <laughs> yes. i would have loved to have seen those cars drive <laughs> into that wall because oh man and what what do you what has to go through your your mind when when you drive right into that wall and go wait Wait, what what just happened? I was Yeah, Google Maps says not to go this way, <laughs> but that looks really good. Uh, you know, also there was a there was a similar story out of I thought, Italy. I thought it was a shortcut. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was going to beat Google for once. Yeah, I was going to beat Google or Waze, whatever you use. Um, there was a similar story out of Italy. There was a, a group of painters who we're painting, painting all of these perspective uh, paintings on the street. And they painted this like lava scene, like the road breaking apart and it's lava. Oh, yeah. And people would come to a screeching halt. You mean when they drove up to it? They'd... Yeah. Oh, thinking that they were about to, to go into some lava. <laughs> um, they also painted a mother uh, pushing a stroller across a highway oh and caused accidents seriously yeah wow i've seen some of those paintings or chalk art that people do on yeah. sidewalks that are out outrageous oh how because they look i mean the 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 realism and the you know the three-dimensional appearance to it yeah it's outrageous it, it it's incredible so, i mean people blow me away with their i think art is one of the things that really um just I, i'm awestruck you yeah. know at times you know the, the people who can draw like amazing things and but you don't know it's amazing and they're doing this thing and you're like oh this guy sucks <laughs> and then he flips it upside down and it like like oh my gosh that's simba that's amazing <laughs> simba well in the uh the the 3d art that looks like a certain thing when you look at it from one direction and then you you walk around the other side of it yep and it changes how about the square to the circle the what yeah i'll have to google that dude there's this google thing that i can probably there see. is yeah 
um, I feel like we should be getting some royalties from the amount of free advertising Google has gotten I, I from really this episode. So. Yeah, if anybody out there who works for this company uh, called Google, I mean, I you should. Really, I think they employ like a few people. I think so. You should. You should. <clears throat> you should contact us on howaboutthatcigar.com because I think, you know, we can help get the word out about your company. You know, I'm going to say we've sent at least six people there today. Um, but no, yeah, there's, uh, there's this one, it's, uh, it's actually made out of steel and it's this, uh, you know, geometric shape and you look at it one way and it's a circle and then you walk around That's, the other way and it's a square. I love that. I got to check that out. Bends your noodle. And it reminds me, so going, going back to the tunnel painting discussion, <laughs> I reminded of the episode of the office where Michael and and Dwight are driving and uh, Michael's following his GPS and his <laughs> yes. GPS tells him to turn and he turns and drives right, right into, into a, a lake. lake. <laughs> <laughs> That's such a Michael move too. But they t he told me to turn. <laughs> Michael. Oh, I love that show. Bears beats. Battlestar Galactica. If you don't get that reference, uh, mm. I don't. I don't know if we can. I don't know if we can be friends. I don't know. By the way, we have to. I. I. I urge and implore all of our listeners and followers and friends to continue leaving references about National Lampoon's Christmas Vacation for Bear Duplissy. Yes, Bear, we love you, but one of these days we are gonna. We are gonna change your mind mm -hmm. and and make you uh realize the uh the the error and judgment that you that you have for yeah. this you know for chevy chase and really what i uh hope to really accomplish is for you to figure out what is that deep-seated issue there's some undealt with resentment that is really turned into a unfounded opinion of oh yeah that's a great you know so there's there's something in there I you know i like where you're going with that i yeah. think maybe there's some maybe there's some some trauma yeah definitely that, some that, trauma that led to this where <laughs> maybe he had like um you know he was like three or four uh his parents were watching um let's say caddyshack yeah. probably would be the the right time period and um you know he sees Chevy Chase and then all of a sudden he gets the flu and he, and he vomits all over the place. And now Chevy Chase is implanted is that flu thing. Yeah. It's sick. It's bad. You know, we got to deal with this bear. It's that negative reinforcement. Yeah. Yep. It is. Uh, when in fact it wasn't Chevy Chase that caused that flu. Um, it was, uh, it was, mm, I, no, uh-uh. No. Okay. No. And and um and bear, it's not your fault either. No, it is not, it's your, not your fault. Your, it's not your fault. It's not your fault, man. Yeah, it's not your fault. You uh you were hurt. Yeah. And and it's okay. And it's okay to be hurt. And but you have to let you have to let people who care about you come around you and 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 mm -hmm. show you the the true path. Yeah. You know, that Chevy Chase is actually funny. Yeah. And he, uh, comedy genius. I wouldn't go so far as comedy genius, but I'd say he's, I, I, I believe that he was in a lot of iconic movies and, and without him in those movies, they would be lesser. Mm -hmm. Caddyshack, mm. Three Amigos. Mm. Although he had a tiny role in Caddyshack. He really wasn't a lot of screen time in Caddyshack. Right. But, it, but, but you miss him if, if you take out his scenes it's a lesser movie. You got a lot of nice ties, Ty. You got a lot of nice ties, Ty. No, 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 no. Be the ball. Be the ball. No, 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 no. The shortest distance between two points is a straight line in the opposite direction, Danny. Betty. It's Danny, sir. This isn't Russia. This isn't Russia. Well, and then, then, uh, uh, spies like us. Oh, yes. Doctor. 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 <laughs> oh, how can you not? 
How can you not like Chevy Chase? I don't. Mm. I love you, Bear, but. Yep. Wow. You know, I, I actually don't. I don't have a actor or actress that I feel that way about. Um, there's oh, some that I aren't have, my favorites. I have several. But there's there's none that I'm like, I'm not going to see that movie because of my disdain for so, them. So, okay, let's, let's, let's do let's it. Let's talk about this. Let's talk about, have you seen this new movie that got so much hype on Netflix, The Irishman? I haven't yet. Okay, so I don't want I don't it's got a lot of peeps in it though. It, yeah, I mean it's it was it's billed as this this um like the the movie to end all movies, you know, it's it's a Scorsese picture and it's got De Niro and Pacino and Pesci and Keitel and it's they're all back, you know, together in this movie. And is it like the Irish Goodfellas? Well, it's 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 um, it's based on a book based on supposedly you know what really happened to Jimmy Hoffa. Okay. You know, and Hoffa's relationship with uh, uh, the mob and things like that, and um, specifically the IRA. No, not the, not the IRA. Where does the Irishman come? You'll you, okay. You, yeah, all right. You'll see it when you. And I don't. I'll. We'll talk about this on another show because I don't want to. I don't want to um, alter your opinion in all any right. way, shape, or form I'll watch of that movie. Um. But so, movies that are like widely, um, um, widely loved by by the masses that you don't necessarily like can you think of any movies like that 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 are iconic and most people love them and you just don't like them at all because i have a few okay you go while i think so one of them is forrest gump are you joking right now no i'm not i now here's the thing i like forrest gump for the because there's a lot of good comedy material in it there's yeah. there's a lot of memes and yeah. that kind of thing but but just taken on its merits from beginning to end i'm not a fan okay um does it have to do with an actor or actress in the no movie? okay no just as a total package i just don't it doesn't it doesn't mesh well for me mm -hmm. um i think the soundtrack's great the original oh. score is great um, it's got a lot of great, you know, classic songs in it. Um, and there are some, there are some good performances in it, but I think overall as a film, it just doesn't mesh for me. Mm -hmm. I don't like it. Um, so there's a few movies that, um, uh, are hard for me to watch. Um, and, and it's, it, it's a battle. And it is episode one and two of Star Wars. Well, you know, but I feel like that's almost cliche. Well, you I know, I know why it's a battle because they're awful. They are awful, they're but terrible. But you want them to be great. You do. Yeah. Because it it truly is origin story for, you know, yeah. four, five and six. Yeah. So, you know, it, it has enough in it where, you know, but. Um, you know, my youngest son now is uh, rewatching them all in order. Um, and he, you know, he wants to watch them with me. And as we're watching episode one, he was like, okay, proud dad moment. He was like, Jar Jar Binks is a dumb character. <laughs> it's like, that's my that boy. Is a proud, that is a proud dad moment. Isn't when, it? when your son realizes that Jar Jar sucks. Yeah. That's a proud dad moment. It really was a proud dad moment. So, you know, uh, outside of, you know, things like that, I, I don't have a whole lot of these big blockbusters. I mean, yeah, Titanic and, you know. Yeah, that's another that's another movie that's universally loved that I think is I, hideous. I, mm -hmm. I didn't I didn't get into it at all. Yeah. You know, and, and I love chick flicks. Don't get me wrong. I love me some chick flicks. Um, I think King of the Chick Flick 
genre. Is chick flicks appropriate to say nowadays? I don't even know anymore. I Anyways, don't, I don't care. I yeah. say chick flicks. If somebody thinks it's not appropriate, they can, you know, they can use another term. But let me use the term I want to use. King of chick flicks, in my opinion, say anything. Oh yeah, that's a great movie. Oh yeah, Lloyd Dobler. <laughs> that's a great movie. Is uh, dude, he's my hero. Uh, fantastic movie. If if you haven't seen Say Anything, it's like uh, I want to say nineteen eighty eight ish. Yeah, yeah, somewhere in that neighborhood. Um, John Cusack John, and uh, yeah, I I, I don't remember. The, I cannot remember the name of the actress who played the lead role. I don't remember either. Uh, but was it Parker Posey? Uh, Might have been Parker Posey. It could have been Parker Posey. I don't. I can't say. If somebody knows, leave it in the comments. Yep. I don't remember. Let us know. Uh, great movie, though. Uh, it, please go see it. Uh, um, we should do a show about. chick flicks for men mm. we should do a show about that because i have i i also have a soft spot in my heart for for some chick flicks. are you a crier i'm a crier it i used i used to be a lot more than i am now yeah um but i yeah i definitely still there uh there There's are moments a, uh and in fact there are two movies that i will cry without fail every time and uh, the first one is Remember the Titans. Great movie. I cry probably two, three times in the movie. Um, and then Top Gun, When Goose Dies. Yeah. Yeah, that's tough. You know, and I think uh, I think it, it goes back to my childhood type of thing. Um, that came out in 1986. Yeah. I was eight years old. Oh. I probably shouldn't have been watching the movie. Probably not at eight years old, but you know, but I whatever. did. And, um, and that scene was just so powerful. Oh my gosh. The wild tied it up. I love it. I love it. The wild tied the game two two. Oh my gosh. It's in the third, just third, just please, started. Please beat them. I hate Anaheim. Just please beat Anaheim. Yep. Um, and if you're watching or listening and you love Anaheim, then, then, Thanks for supporting. <gasps> How about that cigar? Amy. Oh, my wife is watching Ioni Sky. So thank you, honey. That's my wonderful wife is actually watching the podcast, which I think is incredible because she's awesome. not really a cigar person, but she she Supports had the answer. Her man sauce. It's, it's Ioni Sky was the actress in Say Anything. Yeah. Um, and I think that's so, all she did. And And my wife knows that I love her more than anything in the world, but back when that movie came out i oh. only sky oh my gosh many a teenage dream about that girl yikes she was fantastic yep um and just really seriously a great movie it is um and actually uh, it's funny that she chimed in because i was actually going to mention her but going back to star wars she does she's not really a star wars person and that's fine but yep. when we like for example going way back to when when episode two came out, um, we went to see episode two and that's, you know, uh, for those of you who don't remember, that's when, uh, you know, Anakin was sort of a teenager, um, adolescent, um, idiot. And where they had this stupid line about sand, which was one of the <laughs> worst pieces of dialogue in movie history. And we, we go to watch this movie and I think we had, uh, I, don't remember what movie or what year it came out but um if so a amy god bless her fell asleep during the movie <laughs> and not not at home i mean in the movie theater she fell asleep um and honestly i don't blame her because it was so poor but then flash forward many years later we go to see um uh, episode seven the force awakens mm -hmm. And spoiler alert, if you haven't seen The Force Awakens, I have no sympathy for you because I'm about to spoil it for you. But when Kylo Ren kills his father, kills Han Solo, Amy cried. And I was like, oh, my God. Uh, I did, too. I did, too. But um, I, wow. I was like, oh, my gosh. that's I'm, And it's sort of a testament to, to how well made that, that movie was. 
Um, and, and I think they missed a couple opportunities in that particular scene, but uh, it was still very well done. And, and yeah, she, I mean, that really choked her up. And uh, who, yeah. who wouldn't? I mean, if you, oh my gosh, if you go, even if you, even if you were a, a, a remedial or or amateur Star Wars fan going mm -hmm. back to the seventies, if you see that scene where Han Solo dies, you, you've got to get choked up by it. Oh my gosh, it's it's not easy to watch. Not at all. I mean, just an icon, <laughs> iconic character. Yeah, it know? was. She says, come on now, calling me out on the podcast. Honey, you know I love you. Um, but it was I thought it was adorable that you fell asleep in, in the movie theater watching Star Wars. Because, uh, honestly, I was probably right behind you because that movie was so bad. Episode 2 was just so horrible. And it was probably during that scene when they were talking about sand that she fell asleep. Oh, yeah. I, I, and I was probably only seconds away from falling asleep myself. Well, you, that scene was so bad. I mean, bad. you get a bad, you know, you get a just a bad movie and then you put john williams to it he saved a lot of bad movies he has he saved a lot of bad movies um but he's gonna put you to sleep if the storyline isn't yeah rock star yeah uh jill my wife she uh again like matt love my wife to death uh she hates sci-fi in all its forms in all its forms oh that's too bad however the Mandalorian, she is all in on. That's good. And it is fantastic. And I think I'm going to go with 98% of that is Baby Yoda. Yeah, Baby Yoda is the bomb. <laughs> I mean, Baby Yoda is, is and it's I, I love seeing the memes and stuff like that. <laughs> and I put, I put this thing on Facebook uh, <laughs> yesterday or a couple days ago um, that I found on a different place on Facebook. But it said... Um, uh, name the name the actor who would do the voice of Baby Yoda. Wrong answers only. Oh, I, I, I didn't look at any of the comments. I didn't have time, but oh, I, I just saw that you posted that. It was great. Some of the answers were like Gilbert Gottfried <laughs> and Samuel L. Jackson and uh, Pauly Shore. <laughs> I mean, can you imagine like Pauly Shore doing the voice of Baby Yoda? Paul Rubens. Pa yeah, Pee Wee Herman. That was one of them. Was it? Yeah. And uh, I uh, that was that was so funny just to see people. French answers. Stewart. Oh, and one of them was uh, uh, Fran Drescher. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. I actually said Emo Phillips, and that's really kind of a, a uh, very obscure reference. This this uh, comedian who was big in the '80s who had this super weird speaking voice named uh, Emo Phillips, and. Uh, uh, I just thought it would be hilarious if all of a sudden Baby Yoda starts talking and and has this doo ba doo ba doo doo doo. He had that kind of cadence to <laughs> okay. his voice. All right. Um, but yeah, if, you, if if we talked about it a little bit with with Ben Holt from Distant Cigars about the Mandalorian. Yeah. But guys, if you if you haven't started watching the Mandalorian yet, you gotta go back and watch it because it's it's true good star wars it's old school it's got that spaghetti western kind it of really feel. does yeah um just uh, and that's that's kind of you know we get that same sort of feel that we got from uh um you know han solo being sort of the um you know being sort of that clint eastwood character yep. um it's got that sort of feel to it and yeah. there's there's tons of throwback easter egg um, things that just make it kind of warm and fuzzy, like little little references to uh, to old Star Wars. Yeah, yeah, no, I, it's uh, it's been fantastic. It's very well done. Um, I can't say enough about it. And yeah. and and Disney Plus has a ton of awesome stuff. Yeah, they you really know, do. A, the Nat Geo part, I am just the incredible Doctor Paul. Um, uh, you know, Caesar, the dog whisperer dude. Yeah. yeah. I, my son, uh, my oldest son, Ethan told me that he's really into the, uh, I guess there's this Jeff gold, like the world according to Jeff Goldblum. I, yeah. I which sounds there, hilarious. I haven't watched it yet, but he either. says it's, he says it's great. Um, so I, I want to watch that. And because he is a weird guy. Jeff Goldblum. I thought you were talking about my son, but no, yeah. Yeah. Jeff. Goldblum. I was talking about, no, 
Jeff Goldblum is a weird guy. And that's why I think the show would be hilarious because he's so, I mean, uh, seriously, I, th I think the dude's like from another planet. He's I mean, cuckoo. It's, yeah. his, uh, have you seen hot ones? The, the hot sauce and the wings. He, he did an episode of that. He did. I didn't see that. Oh my gosh. I have to go back. I love that show. Yeah. And it's, uh, it's one of my favorites just because it's so awkward and weird. I got to check that out. Cause yeah, he would be a really good guest on that show. And uh, his Saturday Night Live, when uh, Chris Far, or no, Will Ferrell was playing Harry Carey that. and interviewing him, and and Will Ferrell went off script, <laughs> yeah. and you could just see Jeff like, I don't know what's happening right now. <laughs> <laughs> that was fantastic. That I mean, all the times that he played Harry Carey were great, oh. but that one he did with Goldblum. <laughs> Was because yeah, you seriously saw the deer in headlights look, and he was like, uh, "What do I do? What do I do?" Hi, hi. If the moon was made out of cheese. <laughs> would you eat it? What? I don't. <laughs> it's a simple yes or no. It's a simple yes or no. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and he was on. He hosted recently. He did. I for didn't, his I didn't, fifth. I didn't really see it. Uh you could skip it. Okay. To be yeah. honest. Yeah, I'll S be honest. SNL is, you know, it's it's touch and go. I, I'd say, honestly, in the whole history of SNL, there, I'll say this, when when the sketches are good, they're really good. Mm -hmm. um, yes. But when they're bad, they're, they're really bad. So horrible. And, yeah. And I'd say they've got a, I mean, they're maybe batting, maybe batting 200 in the history of the show. Right. But the good thing is the, you know, those, those good sketches kind of live on and, you know, we laugh at the, you know, everything from the most iconic ones, like more cowbell and sweaty balls, sweaty balls. Um, the, the alien abduction one, <laughs> with, which the, the way Kate McKinnon plays that alien abduction is the best. And with, Ryan Gosling. Yeah. I mean, she just got him like right away yeah, he and he was together. gone. Oh, and the, uh, this one of my favorite of all time, because Jimmy Fallon was famous for always breaking up during, he could not keep it together right. during sketches. And the one that they did when Janet Jackson hosted, <laughs> when they were at the winery in Italy and soaking they corks. soaking corks and you have to say it slowly and carefully to make sure you say it the right way. They were all losing it during that sketch. <laughs> So go go on uh, all of their old stuff. On sometimes YouTube. my uh, brother Giuseppe <laughs> soaks my corks, <laughs> and sometimes I soak his corks, <laughs> and we're soaking each other's corks. Uh. You have to watch that sketch because everybody <laughs> cracks up in that sketch, and and Janet Jackson uh, ha keeps keeps misspeaking and has to stop herself and yeah. go back and say it the right way. And <laughs> you have to, or the one with uh uh which it's, it's funny to say, but Lindsay Lohan was actually in a funny sketch and it wasn't funny because of her. It was funny in spite of her um, <laughs> where it's the Harry Potter sketch where uh, uh, Seth Meyers and uh, 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 Dratch is her last name. She plays Harry oh. Potter and it's like they come back oh. after after summer break. They come back to school. Yes. And let's say Hermione has blossomed. Let's, yes. Let's put it that way. Yep. And <laughs> the the sketch is hilarious. You have yep. this because that's another one where uh, um, Jimmy Fallon is briefly in that sketch and and he can't keep it together. Right. And and basically any sketch and the one in the hot tub with Will Ferrell and oh my gosh in the, or, or Hernandez sorry, in the hot tub. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one too. Oh, and uh, speaking of Harry Potter and skits, um, Key and Peele just put out a Harry Potter skit. I love Key and Peele. Oh my gosh! Well, and this one is, um, uh, Wizard School in the Hood. No way. And they're like, uh, you know, uh, we're right up there with Hogwarts. We're like number two. And then, like, the screen goes to the list of all these magic schools, and they're, like, 147. <laughs> I love it. It is fantastic. I got to check that out. I got to check that out. Um, do we have a numero de los oh, muertos Oh, yes, this week? we do. Well, let's jump right into numero, numero de, de los muertos. muertos. Oh, oh, oh. All right. 
the number is 56,000 a year on average. That's a big number. Yep. Since about 1970. Um, however, last year there was 80,000 in the U S so 56,000 per year on mm -hmm. average, but last year there was 80 mm -hmm. in the U S mm -hmm. Mm hmm. Uh, are these? That's a big number, and it's it only is. in the U.S. Yes, and it's yearly. That's a lot. It is a lot. Is is it? Uh, does it affect people of all ages? Yes. Um, males and females alike. Yes. Um, this one don't discriminate. Is it? related in any way to natural disasters no is it related in any way to disease yes is it a curable disease yes i would loosen up on the disease okay so but... not disease but mm -hmm. medical mm -hmm. condition medical um Bio -physi physiological mm -hmm. related. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it preventable? Yes. According to some. According to some, it's preventable. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is a hotly contested situation. <laughs> um, does it uh, get involved in a lot of discussions around politics or political correctness mm -hmm. or no ide ideological positions? Mm -mm. No, no. I mean, uh, not with this one, but with other things, um, with other things. Is it related? Is it directly related in some way to food? Mm -mm. No, so it's not obesity. Mm -mm. Um, is it related in any way to eating disorders? No. Because those would be vastly female. I mean, the vast majority of Americans who suffer from eating disorders are female, sadly, but it's true. That's the way this, the stats line up. Um, uh, it's preventable. You said, <clears throat> give me another hint. I need something. Um, there seems to be a, a season that this happens in. Andrew, what do you got? I was leaning towards vaccination. You are you are hot on the trail, my friend. What's to do with the flu since you said it was seasonal? It is the flu. It's the flu? People die from the flu fifty fifty six six thousand a year a year. And last year was eighty. 80. Holy crap. Yep. Wow. I'll so, point out that I'm two. <laughs> uh, yeah, Andrew, Andrew is two for is two. Two for two. That's right. Um, Check out the big brains on Brad. <laughs> <laughs> you a smog? <laughs> That's that Hawaiian burger joint. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, all right. So the flu. Well, I'm one of those. Uh, I'm I'm one of those um, naysayers. Well, I so I got a flu shot many many years ago. And I got horribly, horribly sick. Yep. And, it, and I've never had another one since. Yeah. So. Uh, and you're not the only one. Again, that, you that know, one. and I think there are some people that the flu shot agrees with and some people it doesn't. And, you know, um, I don't know. 
you know, it's one. Of, I'm not a doctor, clearly. Well, and, and I want to clarify. So when I say that I don't get flu shots anymore, I am not by any stretch anti-vax. I am pro-vax all the way. I think anti-vax is, and I'm, hey, take it or leave it if you don't like my opinion. I think anti-vax is psychotic. And it's putting my kids at risk. Um, but I am, uh, I just don't get flu shots. Um, that's, you know, that's just me. Um, yeah. I say, do what you will. If you want to get a flu shot, go for it. And um, every year, uh, you know, now that, and I have the last, I don't know, probably 10 plus years gotten one. Okay. And um, I have yet to get a flu since. I might again someday. And and I've been fortunate that I haven't had the flu in years. Yeah. Um, so I've just been fortunate. I mean, I, I get, um, I get colds, you know, and things like that, but I don't, I haven't had the flu in a long time. Uh, thank goodness um, for that. Um, so let's uh, let's jump into uh, notable smokables. We'll we'll do these yeah. after uh, notable smokables. But this, I will say, this cigar is progressing nicely. It's um, I really do like it. It's getting, you know, it's it's as you can see, it's getting down to the nub. It's getting a little bit on the bitter side, but it's still good. Oh, dude, um, I wanted to talk about something. Um, I screenshotted something that was absolutely hilarious. What's that? Um, doom, dang doom, it. Doom, doom. I don't think I can sing the Jeopardy theme song. It's probably copywritten. Well, I guess I don't have it right now. We'll talk about it another day, maybe. All right. Good, um, good talk. Okay. Notable smokables. All right. So notable smokables. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I found it. Here it is. <laughs> Describe what you're seeing. It. Well, so it, we're, I'm looking at a picture of the cut end of a cigar that looks like it has... It's not a hair, but it, it looks like a, almost looks like a vein of a tobacco leaf or, or a piece of uh, twine. It is a rubber band. Shut up. Yeah. And I'm not going to uh, disclose. Do, do, now, it doesn't say immediately that I can see, but did they disclose what the they brand did. of the cigar was? And that was a little sad, you know. Okay. But um, I get it. Um, wow, I, I might post that too, but I don't know that I would call. Um, that's just a very rare bird, you know. So this uh, cigar guy cut it, and it it had a rubber band. I mean, clearly you can see that it's rolled into the cigar. That's yeah, yeah. That wasn't. A, I mean, it wasn't something that the that that's not somebody something that somebody planted in that cigar. Right. You know? That's a bummer. Yeah, so uh, that was uh, <laughs> that was a fun little thing that maybe, I maybe maybe it's meant to add to the flavor profile. Yes, to add mm. a subtle hint of I get subtle hints of rubber band mm. from, from this cigar. Yeah, yeah, yep. All right, so my first one, um, you know, I already gave um, Risty a, a lot of props for this the last couple of days, but the JSK Nugs One Hundred. You like is 100. Nice. Nice. Yep. I have, I've still only smoked a 20. Uh, and I, I enjoyed a lot. We reviewed it on the site. Uh, I enjoyed a lot. And, um, so that 100 is definitely on my list of ones to go pick up at uh, Ramsey smoke shop. Cause I'm pretty sure that's still the only place in town to get them. Uh, yeah. And they were out. Okay. Um, so I got it online. Okay. All right. Um, my first notable smokable of the week, uh, was one you gifted to me. Mm -hmm. The, this year's batch of uh, Añejo oh. from Fuente. Uh, last year's batch was very good. This year's batch is also very good. It was that uh, sort of Robusto size. I don't mm -hmm. know what they call it. but Yeah, I, again, Fuente I, does Fuente. I dig it. That Añejo, I mean, it's 
if you see it in a store, just buy it and smoke it. You're going to like it. I can almost guarantee it. Um, do you have any other ones? The Padron Black label from CMA. From that uh, RCRA. RCRA. That, so you, you got that. Um, tell everybody about that sampler kit that you got. So uh, um, I'm not sure if it's an annual thing, but every once in a while, the CRA, uh, Cigar Rights of America, will put out a um, CRA pack. And each of those cigars are an exclusive size that you can only get in that pack. Yeah. And uh, it's 10 cigars and, you know, there's a Padron, there's an Opus, there's an Alec Bradley, you know, 10 different great cigars. Yeah. And, um, you know, you get it for, you know, I don't remember what the retail on it is, but it's worth it. It's well worth it for the cigars you get. Yeah. And um, you get to support Cigar Rights of America, yeah. which... I highly recommend everyone do absolutely despite uh, getting a pack like that. Um, so you can sign up on their website. Uh, just look it up. I think there's a search engine. Yeah. Uh, um, Moogle. I think, oh, Google. Alta. Oh, Google. <laughs> Alta Vista. <laughs> you were about to show your age. <laughs> Alta uh, Vista. Did you have... Uh, Oh, and so, yeah, the Padron Black Label from CRA. Uh, I've had the Black Label before. It's fantastic. Uh, that shape was uh, no different. It was yeah. also fantastic. Awesome. Um, I pulled, uh, uh, opened up an old box of Camacho Shellbacks, which was a uh, mm. one-off release, uh, part of their Brotherhood series. Um uh, a few years ago, I don't remember which year, but uh, in a green, black and green box, um, and uh, smoked that one. It's that's a cigar from Camacho that a lot of people have. There's there's been a lot of mixed feelings about it. A lot of people like it. A lot of people don't. I'm one of those that that really enjoyed it. I thought it was uh, very it was very un Camacho, but but a cigar I enjoy a lot. Awesome. So, um, did you have any others? No, those were the, the two notables for me. I only had one other, and I actually um, bought it and smoked it here on uh, last Friday. Uh, and it's the Crown Heads um, Court Reserve Full Court Press. Yep. Um, box press version of their Court Reserve. Mm. Brilliant, brilliant cigar. So good. Um, and uh, most likely one that we're going to see a review of on How About That Cigar. I bought a few extras so I could review uh, but want them to sit in my humidor at home and rest for a little while before that review happens. Um, so coming up, we talked a little bit about it already, but coming up next week, we're going to talk to Justin Andrews from Diesel Cigars. And the following weeks, we will be off. So um, mm -hmm. there will still be more information, you know, content and reviews and news and stuff like that coming out on HowAboutThatCigar.com. But um, no shows for the next couple of weeks um, after uh, after next week, that is. Um, and then we return after the first of the year. On the 7th, we are going to have our first ever How About That Cigar Top Cigars of the Year list. And more information will be coming about that soon. And then the following week, our first live show interview with a cigar celebrity uh, we're going to talk to really excited that that we were able to get him on the show um, big fan of his cigars cigars that you can find here in the humidor at Sodi's. Um, nick malillo from foundation cigar company mm. so if you're familiar with elway wednesday uh the wise man uh charter oak um the tabernacle you know those lines from uh from Foundation Cigars, um, he's, uh, you know, uh, made just great progress with that company in the, yep. in the, in the short period of time they've been on the market. And, uh, he's, he's, you know, got a great history in the, in the world of premium tobacco. And, and we're very excited to talk to him about, uh, about his history and about the future of Foundation and things like that. Um, so stay tuned for those. And if you guys have any questions, as always, you can hit us up on HowAboutThatCigar.com. Send us an email directly from the website. Uh, you can always leave comments on uh, previous videos. You can send us questions 
uh, through Facebook Messenger as well. Um, we appreciate those if you have any questions or comments. And until we see you guys next time. Wait. Oh, wait. Wait. I almost jumped the gun. We we got to do our we got to do the thing. Our reveal. So uh, I will say that this cigar that Garrett gave me, uh, it's a very nice Maduro. Uh, got sweetness. Got a little bit of pepper. Um, no, no real strength to it. I'm not. I'm you know getting it as a straight medium bodied cigar. But that's my palate. A lot of people might consider it a strong cigar. Uh, but yeah, good Maduro sweetness. Uh, it burns very well. I keep relighting it just because I talk a lot. Um, but yeah, I, I enjoyed a lot. I think that it's broadleaf, but I can't say that 100%. Um, but as far as venturing a guess on what it is, I, I don't know if I can really venture because they have such a good selection in the humidor there. It's hard for me to really land on a, right. a brand. Um, but I enjoy it. Awesome. Um, your cigar is the Illusione 88. <clears throat> well, that explains a lot why I like it so much. Yep. Very good cigar. Yeah, it is a Nicaraguan Puro. Nice. Um, what, uh, so this so, was like the Robusto size, yeah? Uh, that was, yes. <clears throat> okay. And this... Uh, cigar is just it was barely medium um i would say light for most of it and then just coming into medium in the last third um smooth creamy sweet and um i i would have no idea what this is so that is the warped grand oh. reserva 1988 yeah um with this uh this that band here with the little crown with the thing. little crown and the numbers on it yep so i don't know if you guys can yeah the camera focus. won't focus on that but yeah that's the uh the warped grand reserva 1988 in the uh corona gorda size awesome which may or may not i can't remember if that one's available in multiple uh vitolas but um Ding, 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 ding. The that's word of the day. The word of the day. <clears throat> uh, that's what that one is. Um, and it is, let me double check here. Uh, I'm just checking. The Illusione 88. Yeah, I'm just checking to see. If it's Broadleaf. I had a San Andreas wrapper. Oh, it is a San Andreas yep. wrapper? Yes, it is. Um. That was going to be my second uh, second guess for wrapper leaf, but um, very nice cigar. I enjoyed a lot. Uh, let me pull up details about. Uh, yeah, the warped Grand Reserva, nineteen eighty eight. <clears throat> I've had both of these cigars, and they are both cigars uh, that anybody uh, pretty much should enjoy and like. Yeah. So the Warped Grand Reserva uh, 1988, uh, it's a Nicaraguan Puro. So it's all Nicaraguan tobaccos uh, from uh, um, uh, the the Valle de Jalapa. I was SA just going to say it's got to be Jalapa, Jalapa because uh, LS, uh, Esteli would have given a little bit more spice. Yeah, I usually get a lot more, um, a lot more of that spice and pepperiness mm -hmm. from Esteli tobacco. Yep. So, yeah, very good. Yummy. Mm -hmm. And we encourage you guys to do this from time to time. Yeah. Like we've done before. Check, Take some cigars with your friends. Take the bands off and swap them out. And it's uh, fun. Take us on Instagram or Facebook. You know, if you do this and, you know, yeah. take some pictures and uh, we'll, we'll share them out. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thanks, guys, for your time, for listening mm -hmm. and watching. If you have any questions, hit us up. And until we see you guys next time, burn cigars, not bridges. Take care. Thanks, guys.